In today's video, I want to go over some major Spider-Man PlayStation 5 sequel information that's going around. More so rumors and speculation. A very in-depth post was made on Reddit, and it's making the rounds over the internet. All over the internet. It's all over Twitter, social media. A lot of outlets are covering it as well. I want to take a look at it, however, with a grain of salt, how, because we don't know if this is accurate. However, it is very, very specific. And I also do want to note, if you haven't played Spider-Man on PS4, spoilers will be included so I would highly recommend you to play the game before you watch this video. Also, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 looks to be getting a remaster. The campaign remastered has been rated in Korea, and Guilty Gear Strive beta signups are live right now. We'll talk that at the end of this video. First up, major rumors regarding Insomniac's follow-up to Spider-Man. We know that at some point, Insomniac will be releasing a sequel to Spider-Man if you played up until the end of the first game. Ended on a pretty major cliffhanger, then we had the DLC. There's a lot of information that is still yet to be revealed about the world of Spider-Man and where the game is going to be going. However, a post was made on Reddit about Insomniac Marvel Spider-Man 2 on the PlayStation 5, and with a lot of specific information, this is spreading around the internet like wildfire, and I do want to go over that information. It notes, holiday 2021 release date, probably September, like PlayStation 4 Spider-Man was revealed this coming summer, so I would imagine that it would uh, be revealed alongside the reveal of the PlayStation 5. The official reveal would seem like a game that you could get announce maybe do like a cinematic trailer and then just be like okay this isn't a launch game but it'll come sometime later they did that with infamous second son when they revealed the PlayStation 4, they had a trailer. I think they even had a gameplay trailer for Infamous Second Son, but that was not a launch game. Came out a little bit after launch, in fact. Also noted to be no online co-op, completely single player, which I think is to be expected. I do not want tacked on uh, multiplayer components to this game. I'm sure that's something that people would be interested in. However, for the integrity of the game and if it makes the game the best possible single player experience, I am absolutely okay with that. The game, uh, the rumor also notes Queens and Brooklyn will feature new gameplay mechanics to facilitate the low building traversal set during winter set approximately five to six months after the events of the first game peter is still mourning the death of aunt may and constantly reminds himself of what happened mj and him live together but she is away for the entire first act of the story Oscorp is attempting to clone certain DNA to build a super soldier. Goes wrong, new villains spawn from this, and that's probably going to be a big element of the villain lineup from the second game, so that would be rather interesting. Again, take it with a grain of salt, but nonetheless, it's interesting to note. Harry Osborn will become Venom, but it's a unique take on the character that the source was uh, told. Um, that is something I think a lot of us are expecting based on the end of Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4. Harry Osborn obviously looks to become Venom, but how they're tackling it uh, tackling it looks rather interesting so it'll be unique to see how they take that carnage and mysterio are said to be in the game eddie brock is in the game and a major character miles is playable in sections of the game they're still unsure whether to let the player free roam as him but it isn't being thrown out completely just yet and again a lot of this information is going to be fluid like let's say if this was all real it's still what a year and a half away from the release when we're talking about game releases that are six to nine months away that's one thing because you have to put the finishing touches on a game when you're talking about 18 months away from release okay at that point a lot of things are going to be fluid and there's opportunity for changes to be made think of arkham knight system where you can uh, switch to other bat family characters in certain situations same thing here not very original but it is fun a new web chain mechanic is how my contact named it you can basically chain together web zips so when you reach a point he immediately zips to the next and so on web swinging overhauled they've gone all out on the animation tech this time so we won't see the same animation as much more variety not only are they bringing animation from the ps4 over for the swing releases they're adding many 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 more they have like two animators devoted completely and solely to the web release animations throughout the entire development cycle i find that very very interesting and kind of goes to show once again with playstation 4 exclusives on these games they have incredible attention to detail and spider-man on the ps4 had an incredible amount of attention to detail i wouldn't necessarily put it on the level of a god of war or some of the naughty dog games but there was definitely attention to detail but it looks like they're heightening that even more so with the follow-up if this is to be believed and it was also noted there will be three swing modes realistic arcade and hybrid naming is still not fi uh, final realistic is very spider-man 2-esque in that it's just pure physics arcade is a little fake assistance and hybrid is a merger of the two basically ps4 swing more details to follow over the year maybe not sure depends if my contact wants to keep telling me stuff have a good day he also followed up noting that pretty much all i know is oscorp plays a big part in this venom who is harry is in the game and unleashed they have a carnage thing in there as 
well as cloning from Oscorp itself, which goes wrong and forces Peter to suit up for big fights. So take this for what you will, it has been making the rounds on Twitter and various social media and a lot of gaming outlets, so I wanted to cover this as well. Spider-Man 2 is going to be one of the heavy hitters on the PS5, that goes without saying. I highly doubt it'll be a launch game, and as this rumor suggests, holiday 2021 seems a lot likely. That would be a three-year window between the first game and the second game, which is a little bit about what we expect out of games these days. That might even be a little bit quicker than we typically get. I mean, nowadays for games to get follow-ups and sequels, you're looking at three to four years minimum, sometimes even longer than that. Look at how long it has taken Insomniac to craft a new IP, Naughty Dog going back to Last of Us Part 2. Uh, it takes a very long time to create these very, very ambitious games. If we can get a Spider-Man 2 in holiday 2021, I think that would be rather great, and it would be one of the major system sellers of a PlayStation 5, and you would want a game like that out rather quickly. As much as we love the PS4, honestly speaking, the PS4 did not have a lot of marquee exclusive system sellers for quite a while. I would say the first one was Bloodborne. And yes, you had some good games prior to that. You had Killzone Shadowfall, you had Infamous Second Son, but none of those games in Until Dawn, none of those games uh, I would classify as absolute system sellers. If Spider-Man 2 could be a system seller, and ideally you would want to get some of those system sellers out there for launch, and I think both Microsoft and Sony know that, that the biggest way to sell these consoles is with the games. I think Sony's going to go all out with like a Horizon, maybe a Demon Souls remake, just speculation on my part. Spider-Man 2 probably won't make it just because of the fact Spider-Man 1 came out relatively recently, but if you can follow up with year two having Marvel Spider-Man 2, maybe a God of War 2, that would be a stacked lineup for the second year of the PS5, which I would argue is just as important as that first year. In the first year, you're only talking about two months, you know, uh, maybe October, November, maybe December. We'll see how it all pans out. But Spider-Man 2 being that, that headlining game for the second full year and the first full year, I should say, uh, that would be a pretty major coup for Sony. All right, moving on from that, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered has been rated in Korea, the Gaming Rating and Administration Committee of Korea rated Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered on February 26th. The news comes over one year following the unannounced game's first rating for PS4 by the Pan-European Game Information Board. Activision has still yet to officially announce Modern Warfare 2 Remastered, but I think at this point it is becoming more and more likely. I really hope that the rumors that are suggesting that it won't have a multiplayer component are true, because multiplayer in MW2 was absolutely awesome. We had multiplayer in MW1 Remastered, so I don't understand why we wouldn't get it in MW2. Nonetheless, Modern Warfare 2 did have an excellent campaign as well, and hey, if they just want to bundle in the campaign for free with purchases of Call of Duty uh, 2020, whatever that game ends up being, maybe that won't be as bad, but it would be a bummer to see COD MW2 get remastered and not have a multiplayer component, but right now, they do specifically list uh, campaign remastered, and that's what's been listed on the game, uh, the game rating and administration committee of Korea, but we'll see how that pans out, and I'll keep you guys updated on that. And lastly, I do want to quickly note that Guilty Gear Strive beta signups are live right now. Fighting game fans, here's your chance to try out Arc System Works' upcoming fighting game, Guilty Gear Strive. This is a closed beta, so players need to register before they can have a chance to try it out. For more details on the Guilty Gear Strive beta, there is a link available and you can read all about that. They note, in order to test worldwide network functionality, we will be conducting a closed beta test for Guilty Gear Strive. Participants in the closed beta test will have first access to test online match functionality when the online Online network test is not running. Participants can still play the versus computer game mode. We humbly request the participation of Guilty Gear fans and fighting game fans to help us conduct this task. Guilty Gear has been one of the more notable fighting game franchises in the last few years, probably in the last few decades, to be perfectly honest. And to see a brand new game coming from Arc System Works, the guys that are phenomenal at creating high quality fighting games, that is going to be incredibly exciting. And you know this is going to be a very good game. Arc System Works usually de uh, delivers with all of their fighting games. Look at Grand Blue Fan. Versus, look at Dragon Ball Fighters. They knock it out of the park, uh, park every time. And I have to say, from a visual standpoint, they stand near or at the top in terms of offering great visuals in a fighting game as well. Hopefully, Guilty Gear Strive is out later in 2020, but we'll keep you guys posted on that. And for now, you can sign up for the closed beta. And that's going to conclude this video. Again, major rumors regarding Insomniac's next Spider Man game. For now, take it with a grain of salt as we don't have a lot of information as far as who's bringing out these rumors, but it is something to note, and they are very specific and I do find it a lot to be believable. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered has been rated in Korea and Guilty Gear Strive beta signups are live right now. That's going to conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye.
Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.